Are you making triangles? Jack, have I uh, gone past your level of understanding? I'm, I'm, nail. I'm hoping you can come to some small conclusion on your own. But maybe not. Can you communicate a few points on it? Mm -hmm. Where did you have the slopes? Mm -hmm. Oh, these have slopes of zero? No, oh. they have all of them. I mean, you probably not allowed even Jack to have got something. Did you do all of the lines? Yeah. Yeah. Get it? Fine, you can stop there because I don't have that kind of time. Here is today we are just going to look at slopes of parallel lines and perpendicular lines and just make one small general observation. If you did the slope of these two lines, hopefully you saw first of all they're both positive. Uh, making a triangle, I guess it looks like it crosses there and crosses there. So that triangle is. 3 high over 2 wide, yes? Yeah. Agree to the Grishmi. This one, although they're not completely exact, looks like here and here. Oh, what's the slope of that? 3 over 2. Huh, oh, boy. I wonder what's going on here. This one and this one looks like it is negative 3 over 2 for this one. This one, this one looks like it's what? Negative 3 over 2. Huh. I wonder what's going on here. This is seeming to be a bit strange. Oh, this one does it. I knew one of these didn't look like they crossed, right? I think this was supposed to cross here and here. So it is what slope? One, one fourth. Is that what you got? And this one crossed here and here, which is what slope? One fourth. Now, so based on what you see of parallel lines, here comes the big asterisk. The big telling moment. Parallel lines have. Anybody want to finish my sentence, please? The same, the same slope. That's exactly it. Parallel lines have the same slope. Can you come up with that? It only makes sense because lines with different slopes are going to cross at some point because they can't help it. They're either going to converge it down or up or whatever here. Okay, but they would have different y-intercepts. Right? Just make sure you got that. <clears throat> now, this one may be not quite as obvious to you. Perpendicular lines, children, ladies and gentlemen, those of you keeping track and keeping score at home. Let's just look at a couple of those. Uh, this one looks like it crosses here and here. So that is a triangle that is 3 over 2, right? Yeah. Please agree. This one here, I don't, doesn't matter where. Let's pick this point and this point. Oh, this one is, what? Two. Negative 2 over 3. Wait, are you kidding me? Oh, that makes no sense. How about this one? Make a point here and a point here. It is negative one fourth, right? One up. Oh, I'm sorry, one third. So I'm gonna wait on you, but I. This one. Oh, thank you. This one here is what? Four over one. Wait. Wait. Stop. Four. Three over one. Sorry. This was one over three, that was three over one. I just counted one. I did two. I didn't count, that was my problem. And the last one, children. Boom. Ooh. It's like all the way up at four. Yeah. It's a positive, what is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I love counting over scores. two. And the other one here, and probably supposed to be it, was it? Is 
negative 2 over 7. All right, ready for the big moment? What do, wait, perpendicular lines have, Sam Patzel, this is where you can tell me how are each one of those things related? Opposite. Opposite just means goes from positive to negative. That's part of it. Something might help Sam here. Opposite what? No. Opposite reciprocal or opposite flipped over. They are opposite reciprocal, which means you flip the fraction over. Call. Is that it? Call. Call. Now, why <coughs> is that going to help you for today's assignment, you ask? Leave it to them. Leave it to Ben to bend it as the same question. You got a couple. We're not letting go of yesterday's inverse variation. Well, we're gonna. We've been kind of been spinning our wheels lately. We really need to get. To you're gonna go to high school. You could not have an easier worksheet than this, but some of you may or may not. Think there's two there. Oh. Is there two there? No. Did you put them? there. So if Ben Moon looks at this first sheet, let me see if I have it on my piece of paper here. Oh, you just flipped it. Oh, why does Evan just keep asking me? Not this one? Is it this one? Right. Sure. So let's look at set directions here. The first set says Find the slope parallel to each given line. Oh, Watch how easy this is. This is in slope intercept form. You know that parallel lines have the same, the same slope. And so a line parallel to this line would have to have what slope? Five is the y intercept. Ella. What is the slope and slope intercept for? Remember, it's where whatever's in front, the of the front of the x. The answer to this would simply be sine. The answer to this would simply just be nine fourths. Every line parallel to this line would have to have nine fourths slope. I don't know if I'm going to give you any more answers on that because that's the now. However, when you get down to the bottom section here, ooh, people will ignore number one for a minute. Let's go to thirteen. What would be a line perpendicular to this line would have to have what slope? London? Uh, perpendicular? Would it be positive? It would be positive. Positive what though? Four thirds. That's it. See how easy that's going to be, children? Now, let's go to problem number 11. Problem solved here, children. It's going to be two over one. No, negative one negative over two. Negative one over one. Right? one, over one. Now let's negative rewrite. Well, I'm going to rewrite this equation in slope intercept form. Well, think about it. Let, let me just draw the graph first. Where is y equal to? Y equals to right here. It's horizontal. It's no slope. Now, if you did a line perpendicular to that. What is the slope of a straight up and down line? No slope. The no slope or zero slope? Zero. zero. No, it's no slope. All right, that's my problem. Because horizontal lines yeah, are zero slope, slope and vertical Which lines. only makes sense because, remember, slope is how high something is over how wide. How wide is, how wide is a line? Zero, which means you have a zero on the bottom, which means you can't do it, which means it has no slope, or it's also called undefined slope. Mm -hmm. First day. Uh, now, because that will take that worksheet will take you all of 35 and a half seconds. Now we have to do this. Going back to yesterday. You can sing the Beatles song if you like, Zoe. Yesterday. All my 
my troubles seem so far away. Yeah, yeah. No, you literally just put it out and make an equation and then times it together and then whatever's there, you just divide it. Okay. I will get. I will give you. Take a look, see here, because this one probably is not quite as much in your wheelhouse. Uh, let's just look at one. You have to understand two different things here. We've got direct variation and we have inverse variation. And you just have to use a different formula for both. Okay. A direct variation simply means, ladies and gentlemen, direct variation just means it's proportional. Oh yeah, and then we do that one. Let me just show you a formula. Proportional. That just simply means you can do you can do a little chart like this. Okay, this is the first case, this is the second case. You're comparing x to y. In the first case, y is 5 when x is 4. Find y when x is 8. Oh, well, make equal fractions. How do you go from 4 to 8? Times, times 2. Your answer is just going to be y is going to be 10. All right, that's me. Now, this one, if it says it's inverse variation, that's where one goes up, the other goes down. That's where you use the little formula, if you weren't paying attention yesterday, that says x sub 1, y sub 1 equals x sub, sub two, 2, y sub 2. And you just need to make sure that you keep your thing straight. Uh, y is 9 when x is 10. Might wanna, I don't want to jot those down. We call this sub 1 and that sub 1. So 10 times 9 would have to equal, find y I don't know when x is 5. Whoa. And then you just have to solve that equation, which simply means you get 90 equals 5y. Five five Listen to Evan. He pays so much more attention when he's like right next to the board. It's amazing. What is 90 divided by 5, somebody say? 18. So why? Do you see the difference? This one's the board. And you should probably make sure that it makes sense to you. Look, y, uh, x went from 10 down to 5, so y would get bigger. x went down, y goes up. That's inverse variation. When one goes up, the other one goes down. When one goes down, the other one goes up. And since uh, x went down, y is going to go up. You could almost think about it like this. X was cut in half, so Y is going to be doubled because it's the opposite. It's, it's inverse variation. So you do for 20. Is there a special one on there? I will do one more. What's wrong with 20? Wait, and then what about 16? Wait. That's 19. That's 19. Oh, sorry. Wait, you're saying that you can't work with fractions? But like, what's that? How do we do it? Oh, if y varies inversely as x squared. That's y. also for 60. Yeah. If it says squared, skip that, because we're not this at that point. Like Stop it. All right, so keep in our book so I had to teach it. So Anything that talks about is squared, skip. All right, because we're not, we're not going to square. We're not going to work with squares. How many are Just 16 and 20? Yeah, just two. Cross off 16 and 20. <laughs> Cross off 16 and 20. And I think that will get you there, except I promise you this quiz it was a great quiz. Is it on your own? Yeah, but I don't understand it. Well, they don't fail this quiz. Let me do it. This is it, children. Go, wait. Hello, what's your name? Right I will tell you, boys and girls, you will get the same answer for all three questions on this quiz. You, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you don't show your work, you will get zero credit on any of them. You just need to do one by graphing, one by substitution, and one by elimination. And I even gave you the last two questions. If you can't answer the last two questions on this quiz, I feel very, very, very bad for you. 
Uh, <laughs> very bad for you because I cannot help you drink more than I do this round. That would be understandable. Yeah. So. Yeah. I totally understand. Does yeah. it make sense for you? Yeah. I'm giving you this because this will be the easiest day of the history of math class. <laughs> if I get it right. Again, don't just write down the answers. I am looking for you solving it. Do what if I get a different answer for one of them? That you did something wrong, which is obviously a thing that you should check. Okay. Wait. Wait, what? Solve my graph. What is solve my graph? Oh, wait, you graph it there. Wait, how do you graph that? Oh, wait, so you could play the negative stuff. Let it go what? off the grid. It's off the grid. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So let me do one. Wow. Maybe you can solve the graphing on last. 